Is it possible to pull off a bird deal if you're an out-of-state investor? That's what we're going to be looking into today. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the MLS Search and Analysis Show here on Holton Wise TV. I'm your host, James Wise. This, folks, is the show on Holton Wise TV where we work together. You, me, my team. We help you guys start, build, grow, or even sell your real estate portfolio. So if you want to work with me in the same way my guy John, who I'm working with today, is doing, send my team an email, sales at HoltonWise.com. Give us your phone number. We'll give you a call, walk you through the process. We've already done that with my man, John. And, John, you came to me because you're out there in Brooklyn. Brooklyn's expensive. Cleveland is cheap. You got like 50 G's, plus you got access to a hard money loan. So you want to do some cheap bird deals. Now, you shot me a bird deal uh, that was even cheaper than what I'm going to show you today. Uh, but I did the due diligence on that, and that was a dud, man. There's no way you're going to be able to make any money on that deal. So we nixed that one. Moved on to this one. This Pretty darn cheap, one of the cheaper deals you could find in the area, and it's a reasonable neighborhood, so we can actually calculate an appropriate ARV. I actually looked into this one previously, so I'm going to send you that financial information now. Buy, renovate, rent, refinance, repeat. That's the process where we buy a property that needs renovation. So our acquisition cost and our renovation cost theoretically needs to come in lower than what the property is going to appraise for, right? So we buy it, uh, needs work, right? We're going to get a discount because not a lot of buyers are interested in it because it's all fucked up, right? Then we're going to renovate it. Then we're going to put a tenant in it to get that cash flow. Then we're going to have the bank come in, give us a loan. Theoretically, we should get more money back than we would if we just went and purchased a property that did not need renovation, right? You might not get all your money back, but you are greatly going to increase your ROI, increase your cash on cash return, and stretch your funds further, right? Allowing you to use the same money to buy new rentals and new rentals and new rentals and new rentals. Get you to the point where you're completely financially free, right? If you're able to, uh, you know, you could be able to work from home if you want. You could uh, live in Georgia, have properties in Cleveland and uh, Arkansas, right? That's, that's the name of the game, right? So that's what we're doing, right? That's what me and you are doing, Carlo. And here's the property, man. 152 Oak Street, Elyria, 44035. Just hit the market, bro. $55,000, and this is the perfect type of property to target for a bird deal, right? Listed by a company called Russell, and this is what they said. This three-bedroom, one-bath home could be something special with the right touches. The home boasts a large lot, some old charm features. The home is in need of updates and being sold as is. In addition to that, you can't see this. It's only uh, accessible to real estate brokers. But uh, <clears throat> what had happened is the information I got from uh, the listing agent through that process is uh, there was a tenant in here. Tenant just left. Uh, the owner's an out-of-state dude. He's not cleaning it, not do or he's not doing anything. He's going to clean it. That's it. He's going to have his property manager, like, trash it out. So we got, like, a, a booty rental property where the tenant just moved out. All the agent has done is provided us with one photo. Okay, nothing on the inside, very limited amount of information, but that's good. That's why we want to target this, right? You have an out-of-state owner who's apparently done, disenfranchised uh, with the, rent uh, the real estate business, the rental property business, doesn't want to deal with this, doesn't want to fix this property up, just wants out. That's good. That's going to help us beat down the price. Number two, this listing agent isn't giving people a bunch of information, right? They're just like one picture, not a lot of efforts being put into this, right? So these are why this is going to be such a, uh, a, a good opportunity for us. Cause I think we could beat the price down because I wouldn't want you to pay 55 for this, bro. I want us to pick it up at 40. I want you to spend $40,000 acquiring it. And I'm going to plan to have you spend $25,000 fixing it up, meaning you'll be all into it for 65. What that would get you is a $1,000 a month section eight tenant. It's $12,000 a year coming in. This is just a nice, solid C-class neighborhood, dude. And in C-class neighborhoods, I prefer Section 8 tenants to cash paying tenants. Now, we could go cash paying tenant, but I like to have the broadest audience possible buying my product, right? So you don't want to eliminate all the Section 8 folks. Plus, I just love 
Love the consistency of the Section 8 program, dude. It's government guaranteed rent. The biggest pain in the ass in this business, of course, is dealing with asshole tenants that don't pay their rent, right? You guys have seen the Tenants from Hell show. <laughs> you got a victim. And that whole why is we a victim? We do it live on camera. So if y'all want to see some live evictions, check that out. But that's the biggest pain in the ass, right? But we very, very infrequently have to evict Section 8 tenants, right? Because the government's taking care of that rent, right? So Thousand Bones comes in. An average of 509 is going to go out, right? Leaving you, Carlo, with an average NOI of 491 a month or $5,892 a year. Now, after we spent all that money, we got that, right? That thousand bucks. 65,000 is what we're all into it. I believe we'll be able to get the property to appraise for 75,000. So if it appraises for seventy-five thousand, the bank's gonna loan us fifty-six thousand two hundred fifty, meaning the only amount of cash Carlos got stuck in this deal long term is eight thousand seven hundred fifty. That's a thirty-two point five percent return on your investment, brother. That is a motherfucking home run, okay? And then we'll just move on and do another, do another, do another. Now, obviously, we got. <laughs> I should probably give you a little more detail on that twenty-five G's, right? Like, what the hell? Twenty-five G's on what? Okay. Here's what we're working with, right? <clears throat> we are working with some unknowns right now because the agent hasn't gone in and given us very much information, but that's good. I think that's good because that, again, is going to help us try to pick this up for $40,000. I think the lack of information is going to hurt them uh, because a bunch of other buyers will be scared of that or you know, just not want to deal with it, right? I've been doing this business a very long time, right? Based on what the agent said, house is being sold as is, needs updates. Look, I'm thinking 20 Gs, right? There's... You're going to just factor in we're doing it all, right? The, you know, if there turns out to be updated fixtures in the kitchen or the bath, consider that a bonus. But based on what she said, the fact they're not taking pictures of it, I see no reason to assume that, right? So odds are good you're doing it all, right? So cosmetically, we've renovated hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of homes like this, dude. We, for about $20,000, can go in, refinish hardwoods, patch holes, paint, agreeable paint throughout the whole home, white trim throughout the whole home, uh, refinished hardwoods throughout the whole, the whole home. These old homes all have hardwood flooring in them. You just, we buff them and then we put a very dark stain sometimes. If there's like a lot of scratches, that'll really cover that up, dark stain, and then a bunch of very thick epoxy on top of it. So your, your future turnovers are cheaper, right? The animal pee and drinks and things of that nature can't seep into the wood and cause the house to smell. And we're not replacing carpet every few tenants, right? So neutral paint throughout the whole thing, any holes in the walls, patched up, uh, flooring taken care of, kitchen upgraded, right? We're going to put in Lowe's or Home Depot quality, countertops, cabinetry. In the bathroom, new fixtures, nice little modern fixture, right? You got your tub, we'll probably reglaze the tub shower. Uh, we'll put a new vanity, new toilet, new vinyl flooring in there, which will match into the kitchen. And then the rest of the home will be the hardwood I'm talking about, right? We, we can knock that out for about $20,000. Hey lenders, our investors are looking to work with you. Send us an email at sales at holtonwise.com. Now, I also factored in another $5,000. You got some big ticket items that are important when you're renovating homes. You got a roof, house like this, probably like a $6,000 roof. You got a furnace, those are $3,000. You got a hot water tank, that's $1,000, right? So $6,000 plus $4,000, that's $10,000. Do we know if we need to spend all ten dollars right now? No, we do not. Theoretically, all of those items actually are in working order because we just had a tenant in there. So I would assume they're all in working order, but I would not assume that any of them are new, or at least that all of them are not new. I would assume they're mid to end of life. So we're going in, assuming we're going to do a full $20,000 cosmetic renovation, and then spend approximately $5,000 on some of those three items. Now, when we make this offer, of course, this is just the first step of the due diligence. So we're going to make this offer contingent on your third-party home inspection. And if we get in there and we realize, oh, man, based upon new evidence, right, new evidence, we can't put this home together for 25K, then we need to renegotiate, right? At that point, I can go back to the seller like, hey, you know, we need another 5K off to make this deal work. You want to do that? Maybe we meet in the middle or, you know, it's possible we may have to move on from the deal, right? The home inspector could go in there 
And it turns out there's a major structural issue. I'll tell you right now, if we have a structural issue with this home, the numbers don't make sense. There ain't no way we could put it together, uh, you know, for anywhere near 25K, right? We might have to spend 40K on, this, uh, on the foundation, right? You wouldn't want to deal with that, right? At that point, we would move on to another deal. So that's where we're at right now, though, right? We're going to take that lack of information, try to beat the crap out of the seller, get the thing down at 40. And then from there, after we get our people in there, Maybe we'll have to beat them down even more. Maybe we won't. Maybe the deal works. But if we can be all into this thing for 65K, dude, you're, you're making good money. That's, that's a perfect burr, right? These are the types of properties we need to target when we do burrs, guys. I know a lot of people out there, you know, they're wanting everything nice and neat and available for them in this easy bow, and they want as much information as they can right off the rip. Guys, the Burr strategy is all about buying distressed properties from distressed sellers, dude. You're buying problems. You're buying issues. You're buying from people uh, that just don't want to deal with it. So you're not going to find everything like ready to rock in a nice, easy to understand bow for you, right? That's what you hire me for to come in and, and shoot you straight and let you know, you know, what I think's happening. And I could kind of read between the lines, right? Because, you know, for this strategy to make sense going forward, that's who we have to target, right? You're not going to like buy bird deals from professional sellers that know exactly what they're doing, or you're not going to be able to do a bird deal on a fully performing rental property, right? The whole thing is buying properties that are not being properly positioned, right? And you're, you're sliding in there, taking, taking advantage of that, adding some value. That's how the whole thing works, right? Welcome back, John. What are your thoughts now that I've given you the numbers, right? Unlike the last one that I did for you, you see that we actually have a reasonable neighborhood. I can give you a valuation, what I expect going forward. On top of that, we could manage the asset for you, right, and actually get a reasonable, consistent rental income for you, right? I didn't even mention it in your last video, but in your last video when we did that super ghetto property, right, like part of uh, the success of a burr <laughs> involves actually being able to do the rent process where you actually rent it out to a tenant. But if you can't actually get a property manager to work on your behalf, how are you going to rent a property out to a tenant? So like the last property, the neighborhood is so brutal, dude. Like property management companies like my company, Holton Wise, or other people's companies uh, that are licensed and legitimate, which, guys, you should never, ever hire an unlicensed property manager, especially if you're an out-of-state investor. You're investing, you know, thousands of miles away from where you live. The last thing you want to do is entrust your very large monetary investment with an unlicensed individual. I mean, they're already running an illegal business, right? So if they don't have a problem running an illegal business, you think they give a fuck about your money? You don't think they're going to bend some rules? to snap some of your dough, right? With anything, especially out-of-state investing, guys, there's risk. Do not add an additional unreasonable risk by having to work with an unlicensed illegal property manager in an already extremely high-risk neighborhood, right? Because that's why you're doing it. You're only working with the illegal unlicensed property manager because the licensed legal ones won't touch an area because there's so much risk we can't even staff our companies right and like the repairs obviously for this one my team john we will handle that renovation we will handle the property management we'll handle the insurance we'll handle the title title work but like in a super ghetto rough tough neighborhood i can't even hire people of quality right quality contractors i can't even staff my contracting company with quality guys if we're working in neighborhoods that tough so like just like an unlicensed illegal property management company you'd also be dealing with unlicensed contractors man you're talking about unlicensed electricians hell no dude that's a bad move dog that's again that's super risk right that's how you get sued by your tenants and like you know they take everything you own because you get an unlicensed dude in there slaps in a hot water tank does it the wrong way carbon monoxide fills up in the house your property manager who's illegal and unlicensed probably isn't clever enough to understand housing codes they don't put enough carbon monoxide detectors in your home somebody dies that's how you you lose your money right i get investors all the time freaking out about should i buy a house in my personal name i need to put it in an llc so i don't get screwed or lose everything i need asset protection piercing the corporate veil all kinds of sound bites right well guys Blah, 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 blah. A lot of that is fear-mongering, okay? The big thing, invest in neighborhoods where quality people will work. If the quality people are working there, they're licensed, they're approved by the state, they are legally able to do business, they understand local, state, federal, building codes, okay? 
If you operate this property through a professional investment firm, professional property management firm, you don't have any building code violations, your level of liability and risk is extremely low, right? And it all starts uh, with the neighborhood, really, right? Because the types of neighborhood you're in are going to determine the types of tenants you're going to work with, and they're going to determine the types of people that are going to be working on your behalf, right? So all those reasons are why I nixed that first one and why I give the thumbs up on this one. So let me know, brother, if you want to make a move on this one, you want to put in an offer, reply to the private email I sent you. If not, I got one more option for you. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.